hope you're doing well. It's fall, which means leaves are falling, which means I've got a lot of work ahead of me, which also means that, by the way, when I moved into the house that we now are living in, I thought with all these evergreen trees around, it'd be a much less work. Not true. Much more work all the time. Anyway, nothing like those little pine needles that find their way into the house constantly. Well, I want you to take a moment and think, this has been rattling around in my brain, something that has kind of troubled me recently, is this issue of equity of outcome. We hear a lot about that today, that you know, that various people groups are more likely to be prosecuted than others, various uh, individuals or of a particular ethnic origin are more likely to have this problem as compared to others. And so there's this desire to just balance everything out, everything's supposed to be equal across the board. Well, there's a problem with that. The first one is it's not truly equality. Uh, and it certainly isn't equal justice. And that's one of the things that uh, I think oftentimes we tend to overlook. Our desire to, how can I say it, be concerned or careful in these areas uh, actually perverts them. So a couple of verses in the Bible that speak to this, and I think uh, speak quite openly about it, is in Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 15 where they were told that they were not to respect the poor over the rich or the rich over the poor. And if they did, they were perverting judge, uh, justice. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 17, very interesting verse. Actually, I read verse 16 and 17. I charge you, judges, at that time, saying, Here are the cases be between your fellow countrymen. You judge righteously. In other words, there is a standard. The standard is set by God. It's what he declares to be right and wrong, not the outcome, but the, what is right and what is wrong. Uh, between a man and his fellow countrymen, or the alien who is with him. One of the beauties of Jewish law is that aliens, people that were foreigners, were treated respectfully under the law. And you shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small and the great alike. You shall not fear man nor the judgment, uh, for the judgment is God's. The case that is too hard for you, you shall bring to me, and I'll hear it. That's interesting. Uh, basically, that issue of fearing man, distorting justice, uh, means that there's some kind of string attached. Uh, remember what Jesus said in John chapter 7 and verse 15, he said, I, I want you to judge righteous judgment, not by sight, not according to the things that you hear. When the Lord is described in Isaiah chapter 11, I believe it's verse 2, it says that he won't judge based upon what he sees or what he hears. He'll judge righteous judgment. Um, righteous judgment, as justice is supposed to be, is blind to everything but the event. There's a, an action, an act, and is it right or is it wrong? That's righteous judgment. If we put anything else into it, I heard somebody say one time, anytime you put social on anything, you've destroyed it. You've perverted it. And in all honesty, this is true. Uh, if we're seeking equal outcome, then it won't be fair for anyone. And ultimately, those that are being treated well today will be mistreated tomorrow. Uh, what we want is equality, meaning that everyone is treated the same way under the law. That everyone is seen and has nothing to do with any aspect of their ethnic origin or anything such as that, their social standing, any of that. I think what has frustrated Americans more than anything else today is the sense that much of what goes on in our nation in terms of justice is directed by people that have put their finger on the scales. In other words, they're partial. They're choosing some over others. Now, as Christians, 
it's important. Why is this important for us? Because we see everyone equally as the potential recipient of the grace of God. That's exactly what the Apostle Peter said in Acts 10.34 when, when he was at the centurion soldier's house, Cornelius, and he received the Spirit without even being baptized. He said, I, I, I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons, that he is allowing anyone who fears the Lord to come of all nations. God's not a respecter of persons. God doesn't put one above another. God doesn't allow for one to have a greater opportunity than another. This is why the Holy Spirit is so engaged in the conviction of mankind there in John 16 and verse 8 through 11. For you and I, that's a great opportunity for us to have a heart to share the gospel because everyone, everyone, we see everyone the same as we are ourselves in desperate need of God's grace, his forgiveness and his love expressed through Jesus Christ. Till next time, friends, God bless you.